Hello everyone. Today I am playing the Is It Phoenix Drake, whatever you want to call it, deck from Standard. I have only played four or five matches with this deck, but instantly knew that I had to record with it because holy crap, this deck is so good. I always thought it was good. It was beating me with semi-regularity, like I was going pretty even with it, but it wasn't until I played it myself that I realized I was registering this deck's worst matchup every time. I was playing decks with a lot of spot removal, including Vraska's Contempt, to permanently get rid of Arclight Phoenix, and that's the only deck so far that has had any chance against this. I queued into Mono Red and was able to just race because my creatures were so big, and I had enough removal to deal with theirs. I queued into a bunch of control decks, and they just didn't have a chance. I haven't dropped a game with this deck yet, so hopefully I'm not overhyping it only to lose, but we'll see. So, if you don't know how this deck works, our threats are Goblin Electromancer, which chips in for a little bit of damage, but mostly just makes our spells cheaper. Arclight Phoenix, which comes back from the graveyard if we cast three or more spells in a turn. And we have Crackling Drake, who cares about the number of spells in our graveyard or in exile. And this card is really, really big, and importantly about these threats, it is really hard to grind them out. If your opponent kills a Crackling Drake, well, that's fine. You're already up a card. It already drew you a card when it entered. Opponent kills Arclight Phoenix? That doesn't matter. We'll just keep bringing it back. And then almost every other card in the deck can trips. We've got a little bit of spot removal with Lava Coil, Shock, and a single Beacon Bolt. But mostly we've got cards like Charter Course, Radical Idea, and Discovery Dispersal. Some versions of this deck play the red can trips, like Crash Through and Warlord's Fury. And those are okay, they cost one, so you're going to more reliably buy back your Arclight Phoenixes. But I just don't love them. I prefer card selection off of something like Discovery, or the possibility of card advantage off Charter Course or Radical Idea. These have just felt really good to me, and I haven't felt like I needed one mana options. Going to the sideboard, we're pretty good against Control, but we do have some dead cards like Lava Coil, so we've got a whole bunch of sideboard cards for that. Sainful Stroke, Negate are just ways to fight back with actual counterspells. And then we've got Ral is it Viceroy and Niv Mizzet Paran. And these cards are both just very difficult to deal with threats. We play them and the game will probably just end if the opponent's already spent resources on these. And finally, Banefire is an uncounterable way to burn them out. Then against creature decks, we have a lot of removal in the main board and we have lots of ways to find it with our cantrips. But if we need to deal with lots of creatures, we've got Fiery Cannonade, and if we need to deal with really big creatures like Lyra Dawnbringer, we have Fight with Fire. Alright, I think that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and hop into these games, because they can go long if we have to grind a bit. Alright, getting into the first match. Ah, uh, sounds really bad. I think we have to mulligan this. Like, this is okay, but we don't have a way to discard the Phoenix, so we don't have any cantrips to really get going. I think this is too bad. Losing the die roll. Blech. Not an auspicious start. Opponent taking their good old time to decide if they're going to mulligan. This hand really does need, or this deck, really does need, like, one of the cantrips. Even just an opt makes this hand a lot better. Ugh. I really wish we do the matchup. We've already got two removal spells, though. We probably don't need a shock. Mountain. Let's see. Hopefully not playing the mirror again. This mirror is kind of boring. Basically, one pick person sticks a bigger crackling drake and just kills the other person with it. Probably the case. I don't know who else is playing Tormenting Voice. Do I even opt here? I don't even know what I'm looking for. Like, we can hit our lands anyway. I think I'm just gonna wait. Like, we can't make an... Like, do I want this Lava Coil? I don't know. Yeah, don't spend your cantrips if you don't know what you're digging for. We've got lands, we've got removal spells, like... Maybe I'm supposed to bottom that and dig for a threat no matter what. I think I will do that now. Since we have a bit more information. 
opponent maybe playing like a big red deck rather than this being the mirror. That or they have a very weird draw. Okay, that is a good draw. We are rather flooded, but hopefully won't die that quickly. Hopefully their game plan is to play nothing but rekindling phoenixes and coast to victory on that, because we have a game plan for them, if so. Nothing. Well, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play this Drake that they can't counter, and even if they kill it, it draws us a card. Okay, well, it's still just doing nothing. I hope we don't just die. Like, maybe they have something weird? Okay, Lava Coil, sure. Let's go ahead and lead with a Discovery. Sure, I'm in. <laughs> I'm go ahead and pass here, not doing anything else. I think I will radical idea to draw this Drake and then opt to draw or not draw. Okay, so they are playing blue red with a weird draw. All right. Still haven't done anything. Maybe like a blue red control instead of the blue red Phoenix deck. I have to imagine they would have been ready to start doing stuff with the island if they were doing what we're doing. I don't think that's exactly where we're at right now. Maybe we are. Maybe we just needed more cantrips. Alright, so... I'm gonna go ahead and play this Electromancer. See if they have anything to say about that. Do not... Crackling Drake? Killing the Electromancer, sure. No counter, so we get to go up a card again. Sweet. Opponent has cast some spells, but not as many as us, so our drakes will be better, and we have answers even if they can play something like that. Okay, they did have a blue card, but it was just a radical idea, no uh, chemist's insight or anything like that. And they have a removal spell, again, I'm fine with that. Electromancer, we are probably going to kill that guy. Let's see what's up first. So, hmm, these all kill a uh, crackling drake out of the opponent, but this doesn't exile, so I'm gonna go ahead and beacon bolt first. Hmm. I should have played an island there, we've got way too many mountains in play, and this deck we want to hold some lands to pitch to our jumpstart cards, but if this deck has any problems, it's being cut on blue mana. Okay. They also have a beacon bolt, so that's fine. Sure, chart a course. If they pitch a phoenix and then, like, shock me, then they get to get a phoenix back here. No, just pitching a land. Okay. I think I am also going to chart a course. Okay. Go ahead and pitch an island, because we don't really need that. And then, I think I'm just going to pass the turn, probably casting Radical Idea, pitching this Sulphur Falls. Yep, Opt Resolves. I would love it if opponent were on the version playing Enigma Drake and they just played some of those because that we get to kill and they don't even get a card out of it. Sure, Tormenting Voice, that's fine. If they play Crackling Drake, it will be very large. Yep. But that is A-OK. -okay. Okay. 
we have drawn all of our lava coils. Let's okay, let's do the math. We have seven lands in play, and so we can beacon bolt, shard of course. No, but we don't have quad blue. But we can, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a lava coil here. So that we can hit them with Electromancer. Play Crackling Drake. And Shard, of course, to just draw two cards. So now we have all the pressure in play, and we're up a bunch of cards. Hmm. Cool. I think... I will play this. I'm not going to cast anything immediately, though. I want to keep a whole bunch of spells in hand. Our Phoenixes are hiding somewhere in our deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's okay. Probably going to Beacon Bolt my Drake here. Opponent is running out of cards, though. We're running out of threats, though, so... Uh, one dead Drake, two exiled Drakes, and this Drake's about to die. So that's all the Drakes. We need to find our Phoenixes to actually win the game. Resolves. Yep, that's fine. Yep, sure. Pitching an Enigma Drake. Wow. Damn, that is, uh... That's ambitious. I don't know how they're planning to win the game either. <laughs> Alright, we're going to lead on a Discovery. Hopefully see two Phoenixes on top. Or two lands, you know, whatever. Holy crap. I'm going to Radical Idea first. Yeah, uh, okay. Er, no. Pitching Steam Vents, because that's the worst one here. Again, these kill anything the opponent uh, could have. I suppose they could be playing a main deck Niv Mizzet, but that would be really weird. Um, so, just going to go ahead and get that out of the way. And we can Radical Idea pitching our island. Yep, sure. Enigma Drake, we have that covered. Again, we're up a lot of cards here, but our Phoenixes have not been forthcoming, so... Okay, sweet. Lead on Electromancer, because it'll save us a lot of mana. Um, we will Discovery next. Again, Phoenixes, right there. There we go. We'll Discovery one more time, again hoping to mill some Phoenixes. Same set on top, that's great. Okay. Unfortunately, we do not have double blue, so we can't reanimate this Phoenix this turn. But I think we're gonna be okay now. Uh, it took a while. All four of our Phoenixes were in, like, the bottom 22 cards. <laughs> uh, we got there. Opponent is out of cards. They've got a radical idea, so they can't top deck a land and be out of... Uh, out of luck, I guess, but it's going to be pretty difficult to come back from this board with one card. Yep, sure. Radical idea, sure. I was going to laugh if they drew exactly Niv Mizzet Paran there, because we would just lose, the game would just be over. But, as I said before, that is rather unlikely. Okay, an opponent packs it in. Took us a little while. We both had removal for each other's threats, but we got there in the end. So, let's board in our sweet Planeswalker and our big ridiculous dragon. Get in some negates, and we can... We can cut our shocks, because they are terrible. Cut beacon bolt. The question is, do we play around opponent having their own niv mizzets? If we were to do so, we'd probably board in fight with fire. I think we can hedge and bring in bane fire. This can still kill niv, but uh, 
but can't be countered, so... And it's more flexible. Let's see, we can probably cut, like, a lava coil, since we're bringing in, uh, Rowls and Banefires. Maybe trim a Radical idea. I don't know. Actually, let's keep the Radical ideas in. Let's trim Charter Course. Charter Course is one of your better cards, since it's card advantage. But it only works, like, when you're already winning. Most of the fighting in this matchup is keeping a creature on the table. So, I think if we can keep a Drake on the table and attack with it, we're already more than okay. We don't need something that draws cards after that point. Uh, on the draw, is this okay? If we hit a land in the top two cards, we're, like, really good. If we don't, we're, like, dead, though. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan. This hand is much worse, but I don't think we can go to five. Okay. Wow, this is like that hand that we mulliganed last game. Shocking to keep up opt, sure. This hand needs a lot of help. We need to draw good cards. Ironically, Charter Course would be, like, the best thing we could possibly draw here. Tormenting Voice, sure. Tormenting Voice uh, is an interesting one because it does a lot of what this deck wants to do, but it doesn't work if you're empty-handed. And so I think the other options are probably better. I could be wrong, though. I was just going to kill my Electromancer, sure. Definitely don't want that. Okay. Uh, that's one of the better cards we could draw. So we have a measure for not dying, card advantage, and a possible threat. We could be okay here. If they keep doing this to us, though, we're just going to get run out of the game. Won't be able to keep up with the card advantage. Hopefully that's their only one. And we do just need to kill this. Uh, we'll die to it very quickly if they get to untap. Okay. Opponent has nothing. We'll just... Uh, maybe we we're supposed to just play a Phoenix, but I don't know. I think I'd rather just try to resolve a Chemist's Insight. What we'd really love to do is, like, play this, have it get countered, and then untap and Niv-Miz it, and the game is just kind of over. All right. Alternatively, this can resolve. There's no reason it has to get countered. Let's go ahead and opt. I'm glad we opted. We definitely don't want that land. All right. So. Do we just start casting Phoenixes? I don't think so. I think I'm going to pass and again leave up Chemister's Insight, and we can pitch a Phoenix to that. Then maybe look to chain cantrips next turn. Let's see if they counter it this time. Nope, just get to draw some cards. Sweet. Okay. Huh, we should actually let on Discovery. Yes, I would like the big unbeatable dragon. So, do we attempt to get our phoenixes into play this turn, or do we just play the dragon? I feel like we just slam this. Say, okay, opponent, what do you got? If they want a million for one themselves uh, against Niv-Mizzet, then that's fine. We'll win the game with the phoenixes later. Sure, play your cantrips, that's fine. And of course, if they can't kill this, if they don't have the removal spells, which they're digging, so maybe they don't, uh, this'll just be game over. We'll cast a discovery and draw two cards and start reanimating phoenixes and they'll just be dead. Goblin Electromancer is fine.
Okay. Oh, wait. I should have shot the Electromancer. What am I doing? For some reason, I thought this was going to kill Niv by itself, but it is not. Yeah, I messed that up. I could have gotten their Electromancer. But, like I said, this uh, gets a whole bunch of cards out of their hand while drawing us a bunch of cards, so feel okay about where we are. Okay, now it's our turn. Electromancer immediately going to pay for himself on these discoveries. Been two lands, because we don't need those. Wow, there's still a land on top, okay. Discovery again. Huh. Are these good enough? I think we might want one. Then we can play a mountain. Choose X equals two. Get rid of their Electromancer. Okay, those cantrips were very bad for us. We saw a lot of bad cards, <laughs> but that's okay. Hmm. If we'd seen this much earlier, we could have protected our Niv with it, and that probably would have been game over. Okay, opponent has their own, and we just burned our Banefire. We look like fools. Oh my god, and they have another Lava Coil? That's the third one? Jeez. We're probably dead. Uh... Maybe got a little hasty with our niv mizzet our cantrips were bad, and then they had the best trump card, plus uh, an answer to our phoenix. Like, this couldn't have gone much worse for us. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother playing this out. Good, like, radical idea to dig for an answer to niv, but <laughs> that, that's so bad. They just draw a million cards. Alright, this mirror is kind of miserable. So... Maybe I was hasty in cutting these. This would have been great to have at any time. Could have pitched our things. I'm going to go back the other way. I think we need all these other cards, but I think being able to pitch Phoenixes would have been really powerful that game. <laughs> this deck gets a lot less fun when everyone's playing it. Alright, we need a red source, but most of the hand functions on two mana, and we have an opt. So I'm actually going to keep this. This is greedy, and we might just lose the game, but... Ugh, is Island good enough? I think it is. Because it unlocks a good, a good chunk of the rest of our hand. Hmm. Opponent shocked in the steam vents. So I don't even think we are going to Electromancer here. I think I'm just going to pass with Radical Idea up. If they opt right here, I would slam the Electromancer, but... I'd like to at least get something out of this Electromancer before it just gets shocked. We cut our own shocks, and maybe that's a mistake because Electromancer is so important, but they're so bad otherwise. And like, Lava Coil still kills Electromancers, so. Okay, now we have all the lands in the world. We need another red source for Crackling Drake, so. I'm going to play Goblin Electromancer, and I'm going to immediately chart a course. They appear to have a shock here. Yep, that's fine. Sweet, and I can pitch this island and have Sulphur Falls for a Drake. Awesome. Hmm. Do I want to walk Crackling Drake into a possible Disdainful Stroke? I don't think so. Opponent's missing land drops, so I think we can wait and just play the long game here. We kept the one lander, but we are not going to be the first one to miss a land drop. That's kind of funny. Chemister's Insight. If they want to counter this, we'll slam Drake and be really far ahead. They do not. Okay, that's fine. Okay, pitching an Arclight Phoenix to hand size is not the worst place to be. So, I think I'm going to play a land, and I'm actually going to play an Electromancer here. 
because once this resolves, it is actually leaving up Chemister's Insight, because this card will only cost three. Removal spell? Nope. Okay. Let's see. We have not milled any Phoenixes yet, but we have one ready to go. Okay, they did not have the removal spell yet. I think that said they topped with opt, so. Okay, tapping out for Beacon Bolt is A-OK -okay with me. Okay, that's too many lands. So, replay Electromancer. We go ahead and chart a course. We have all the lands in the world. Radical idea. Again, pitching one of these billion and a half lands. And then I can go ahead and opt. Chart a course is great. Then we can guild gate, get our phoenix back. And we're in an okay spot. Opponent hit their land drops, and so maybe they are going to start really doing stuff. Yeah, okay. But they need to deal with our board and start applying pressure, or else we're just going to run away with the game with our card advantage and such. Okay, Lava Coil is very good for them. Alright. So... What are the odds in the top million cards of finding a third spell to arc late? Let's find out. I suppose we don't actually even need one. If we shock in this steam vents, we've got enough to just do it. Go ahead and discovery, hopefully milling more phoenixes. Hmm. Yeah, I think these are fine. Yeah, so we can... Chemister's Insight. We are up a lot of cards. I can just go ahead and play this tapped while still leaving up Negate, and we get back our Phoenix. Hit them for five. Okay. Really like our spot this game. That said, uh, opponent might just play a Niv-Mizzet, and we'll lose all of our advantage by double Lava Coiling it. Can't this turn, though. Still on five. I think I'm actually going to negate that. I think preventing a Lava Coil on Phoenix is one of the best things we can be doing with negate. Okay, negate on Iron Gate. Opponent really starting to run out of resources. We really just have to hope that they don't have a niv it left, because that would be the easiest way for them to stay in the game. Wow. Okay, oh, to get back there, Phoenix. Alright, sure. Luckily, we are as prepared with Lava Coils as they are. Maximize Velocity is interesting. I've had, like, good players recommend this, but the fact that it doesn't cantrip, like, kind of sucks. <laughs> I really love how this deck does a lot of stuff without spending cards. Perfect. Awesome, we drew the Banefire. So now even uh, even Niv-Mizzet won't keep us down. Okay, then we can chart a course to just draw two. And now we have infinite Crackling Drakes. Sure. So we have an answer to the only card we can't beat, lethal on board, and a bunch of basically unbeatable threats. Feeling okay about this one. They draw all three Lava Coils again? Or have they already spent three? No, just two. Oh yeah. <laughs> we can also just Banefire them to death. I hadn't thought about that. They can't counter it. We have plenty of mana. This card is better than I initially thought it was going to be in Standard. 
opponent. Would need something pretty spectacular. If this were paper, I would just show my opponent the Banefire, and they can do whatever they want, but most people would concede, because there's nothing they can do. There's no Vendillion click in this format, they can't... Blue-Red cannot deal with the fact that this is coming. I don't think so. Maybe there's some sort of redirection spell in Standard? There often is. And they're usually bad, but... Okay. Opponent may be timing us out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tape and come back when the match is ready to end. Alright, yeah. Opponent let the clock run down. I'm gonna go ahead and Bane fire them for a million. Conveniently, even if they could somehow get rid of this, we can just Lava Coil the Electromancer, attack them for five and win the game. And we have a negate up, so... Uh, yeah, would be pretty impressive. Oh my gosh, are they gonna make the clock run down again? Please, opponent, have some decency. Oh well, that's fine. So, as we saw, we were able to win the games where we stayed ahead on cards. We traded up well, whether it be waiting to make sure we resolved our drakes or prioritizing getting Phoenix out of the graveyard so they had to spend kill spells on cards that we didn't cast from hand. We lost by getting too hasty with our trump, and, like, the niv visit was very good. It was, we drew two cards, they spent two cards, and we spent one, so it was a four for one. But that wasn't good enough in the context, because it meant that we had no resources for their trump. Like, a four for one does not equal just winning the game. So, in the future, we need to hang on to our bane fire. don't get hasty with that. And make sure that we can try to keep our own Niv Mizzet alive. Alright, we'll be back with the next match. Alright, getting into the second match. Hopefully not quite as grueling as that last one. The mirror is kind of brutal. Sure, good mana, cantrip, plenty of threats. Would love to find like a charter course for our Arclight Phoenix, but... I'm very bad at winning die rolls today. We're only on the second match, but I don't think I've won one all day. <laughs> Perfect. We might actually be supposed to hold... be supposed to hold the opt. Since we'll want three spells very quickly for Arclight Phoenix. Yeah. Opponent, blue-white, almost certainly just a control deck. This matchup is very good, so... Uh, I think we're just going to want to reanimate a phoenix as quickly as possible, so let's go ahead and chart a course. They might counter this. That would be smart. Yeah. Smart. It denies us the card selection. They were syncopating, so we don't get our drakes... Uh, well, actually, our drakes do get bigger. Wait. Remember, instant sorcery cards you own... In exile and in graveyard. So it is supposed to count this. That is a bug if it does not. Which is unfortunate. Um, opponent missing their fourth land. That's good for us. Let's go ahead and slam a phoenix. They need another syncopate here or else this is going to make their life really difficult. Did not have the syncopate. I am very glad that they spent disdainful stroke on my creature that reanimates itself instead of my creature that cantrips. Hmm. So do we try to reanimate the phoenix this turn, or do we just start r slamming drakes? I'm gonna go with the drake plan. Force them to use their mana. They don't have a good way to interact with this, so they might not do so. Uh, and in which case they still just get to resolve their chemister's insight, and we're only attacking for a little. Forcing them to have the counter is very appealing. Teferi, hmm. Well, we can kill him, so that's cool. If they have a counter, though, or like a seal away, we're in a lot of trouble. Because even if we might be playing the best deck in Standard, this is by far the best card in Standard. Discovery, perfect. 
Yeah, I don't think we need sixth land. Radical idea. Great. Let's go ahead and opt. Don't want sixth land. Found it anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and shock Teferi. And this is great because even if they have a removal spell, uh, Teferi's still dead. Gonna send both at Teferi. We might lose a little bit of damage here, but it would be a disaster if they had like a lightning strike. Gonna go ahead and play a land. We're likely to find one if we keep cantripping to throw away Tyrannical Idea, and six is a good number, even if we're not actively looking for it, just because uh, we can Crackling Drake plus something else. Hmm. Opponent representing Settle the Wreckage here. Kinda wish I had a shock. I think we walk into it anyway. Like, it's gonna get us eventually. Uh, we can use the mana, and then if they do have a Settle the Wreckage, we get to resolve a Crackling Drake. No. Okay, that's much better for us. Like, whatever. <laughs> we didn't spend cards on those anyway. Not really. Crackling Drake draws a card. Sure. I'm not going to cast any of these spells. I want to be able to re reanimate my Drakes again, or Phoenixes again next turn. We have so many flying red creatures. Ral, sure, can kill our Crackling Drake. That's fine. Okay, they have exactly enough. Yeah. I feel like the, I've got the audio at a good level, except for Ral is it Viceroy's downtick. That sound effect is so loud. It's ridiculous. Alright. Let's start with an opt. Well, uh, that's great. And then we'd love to find the fourth phoenix here. Oh well, can't win them all. <laughs> this is so difficult for the opponent to deal with. Opponent... yeah. This again might be too conservative, but I'm gonna play around to shock. I don't think they have one. Yeah, they haven't even been getting priority, so... Yeah, that probably was too conservative, but... I don't think we're gonna lose the game if we just play this out the fair way. So let's make sure we don't lose it to something silly. Wow, out of the Jeskai deck, really? So they're playing, like, Jeskai Drakes? Interesting. Uh, not interesting enough, but... With, like, main deck Disdainful Stroke, that's interesting. So they are, like, Jeskai Control, but with Drakes as an additional finisher. Obviously, they don't have Settle the Wreckage up here, so I'm not going to play around it. I'm going to go ahead and try to stick one of my Drakes. Yep. They have a counter, that is perfectly acceptable. Do we Discovery here? I think no. I want to hold on to spells in case my opponent has like a Cleansing Nova. Okay, yep, another Drake, that's fine. Let's see if we can't find a Lava Coil. Well. If we just attack and they don't have a removal spell, we just win. But if we find a Lava Coil, we win through a removal spell. Beacon Bolt, also acceptable. Yeah, alright. So opponent does have cards that threaten to kill us, so we need to be careful about that. But overall, this matchup should be great. They're trying to be a control deck, and that is very difficult to do against what we're doing. Let's go ahead and cut some shocks. Then cut a Lava Coil and a Beacon Bolt, like we did before. Bring in some Bane Fires, because they're great. Bring in Unbeatable Izzet cards, because they are also great. And I think this time we do want Disdainful Strokes. Um... Well, is Disdainful Stroke better than Negate? There aren't any creatures up there that we're countering, so let's actually just go with Negates, because these can fight, like, against maybe a Fiery Cannonade or something, but can also get rid of Teferi. 
Then yeah, like... Maybe I'm supposed to cut the lava coils? I don't think so, though. I think we want some answers for the drakes. We need to clear those out and be able to attack, so... I'm gonna trim a couple radical ideas again. Maybe that's wrong, but I think this is like the weakest of the can trippy cards. Let's go ahead and play this. Yeah, our main deck is very well set up, and then we have Niv Mizzet, which is extremely difficult to beat. They basically need immediate to ferry and down tick. And we don't have to play Niv Mizzet on turn six. We can wait until later, in which case, even through the Teferi down tick, we could cast an opt and kill Teferi and draw two cards, and they're still very far behind. And that's if they can deal with our normal game plan. Sure. Get this hand, looks great. Notably also, Charter Course plays much better around counter spells than uh, Tormenting Voice. If opponent had uh, if opponent had been able to syncopate a Tormenting Voice, we would guarantee the, uh, the Phoenix in the Graveyard, but we would be down a card. So, I'm just going to play an Island here. We'll go ahead and opt, looking for some more cantrip type stuff. Discovery would be the best card we could draw. Definitely don't want that land. We'll need fifth land eventually, but yeah. In our type of deck, we're going to find it. Uh, let's just go ahead and fire off Charter Course. We want to fill up the graveyard with plenty of instants and sorceries to make Crackling Drake and Ral better. Just negating our Charter Course, that's fine. A negate that doesn't hit card advantage or a Ral is fine by me. Didn't have anything to do that turn. Okay, so we are going to start playing cards because basically we now get to put the opponent in the mode of counter our thing or be very far behind. And we get to do that every turn for like the next five turns, so... Even if they have a counter here, we're up a card. They don't have anything. They don't have a counter, a removal spell, or a chemist's insight. Yeah, lava coil, sure. Hmm. So, one thing this could indicate is that they might have negates. In which case, slamming Ral would be a bad idea, because it would take our whole turn and let them use their mana. I'm going to go for another Crackling Drake. Oh, they might have drawn a hard counter. Disdainful Star. Okay. Didn't really matter what we played there. Opponent running out of cards. We are not. They could still make our life a little difficult if they just slammed a Teferi, but that's acceptable to me. Okay. Could have played the land, but they had plenty of mana. They could have syncopated for more if they wanted to. Okay. Opponent not hitting their land drops, which is good and bad. I think I'm actually just going to pass here. Hmm. It's possible I should be just hard casting phoenixes, but I think I want to resolve a chemist's insight. I would really like to like hit more lands and have a negate ready to go with Niv. Alternatively, just forcing them if they want to interact with our play, make them do it on their turn. Okay. Uh, more big ridiculous cards. Uh, I'm going to cast a Crackling Drake here. Again, I think they are starting to run out of answers. And we can both do this and cast a Discovery, which is sweet. Don't need those lands. Definitely didn't need those lands. Cool. It's great when Discovery is like almost like a draw three, which is just why cantrips are great in general. Just a strike. Okay. Funny that that doesn't work earlier, but does work now. So, one, two, three, four. If we go up to eight mana... Oh, this is actually kind of cool. We can cast an Arclight Phoenix, and... Uh, we're still leaving up mana to Chemister's Insight binning the other Arclight Phoenix for just, like, infinite advantage. 
That's a little sad, but okay. Uh, as I've been saying so far, the only card that's really scary at this point is a Teferi. And we're kind of lucky that they haven't drawn one. In my experience, Jeskai always draws three in their top 15 cards. Pitch this Arclight Phoenix. Opponent. Ah, copying it. Okay, I was like, damn, a counter is really aggressive there. But yeah, that's good for them. Really would love to find a negate. Still haven't found one. Oh well. Hmm. Unlikely that we can chain enough cantrips to reanimate both phoenixes this turn. Let's just try to play Ral. We can pay for a syncopate for three here. Nope, they have the negate. Okay. And hit our land and just cast this phoenix. Okay. Opponent caught up a little bit with that expansion. Charter course again. I think we can start casting these. It'll be pretty easy to find one spell in the top million cards. Let's pitch a land. Hmm. Do we even want both phoenixes back walking into a settle the wreckage? I think that's probably okay. Don't want that. Cool. I'm glad because this way we get to charter course to just draw two cards, second main phase. Now we have an answer for it to fairy. Cool. Again, I'm feeling pretty good. Just really slow rolling the Niv Mizzet here. We want to completely exhaust the opponent of resources. Uh, so that they are base so that basically they'll have nothing left. Okay. Next turn we can go ahead and cast Niv Mizzet because we have a negate to protect him, and it will be extremely difficult for the opponent to come back from that. Sure, kill our phoenixes, they don't matter. They'll come back. <laughs> and now we have a spare. <laughs> okay. Alright, big unbeatable dragon monster, let's do this. I say unbeatable, but we definitely lost a game last match after casting niv -Mizzet, so. God, we can even, like, yep, ping them for one. We can just go up so many cards here. Although I think what we're actually just going to do is we're just going to attack. If opponent tries to interact with him, we can counter it, and then we're probably just going to be Bane firing the opponent out here. Yep, draw a card, shoot you for one. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can Bane Fire for nine, so we can actually just let this happen. Take action, sure, get an island. Damage. <laughs> like. There are a lot of reasons why this matchup is very bad for the opponent, but the fact that we just fireballed them uncounterably for 9 to just end the game. Like, the game went super long and we just had lethal in hand. That's, ugh, that's gross. Alright, we are 2-0. Let's get back for the third match. Alright, getting into it. Let's see if we can grab another 3-0. Playing against Snap Cryptic. Mm, they might be a blue mage. Ah, uh, sure. Mana that works, can trips and a threat. This is basically what the deck wants. Hey, we want a die roll. Sweet. Would love a Goblin Electromancer off the top. Blue, black. This matchup is interesting. So. Perfect. I think we'll go ahead and bin that. We've got a bunch of blind can trips, so yeah, we're likely to find more lands. Um. The one thing that makes this dangerous is if they are the surveil heavy version of the deck, they are likely to have a blood operative, which can exile our arc light phoenixes, and that is that makes the matchup harder. Overall, I still think the matchup is quite good, although our hand is a little soft to this thought erasure. We don't need to find more drakes. Taking a radical idea, really. 
That still leaves us with three spells to cast, even if they were playing around this, though. That's really weird. Do they have, like, a bunch of blood operatives and they're just gonna help to start eating our graveyard? No, disinformation campaign. Okay. Go ahead and pitch one of these. Let's pitch a radical idea, sure. And then... We'll go ahead and cast this. I want this Crackling Drake to be nice and big. Okay, next turn, we would need a one mana spell to start reanimating a bunch of phoenixes, but that's fine. We can go ahead and look for one. Notably, Arclight Phoenix also plays really well against Disinformation Campaign. <laughs> okay, opponent's playing Grixis. Well, they're playing Mono Make Us Discard cards, and that is not really a viable strategy against what we're doing. Oh man, this is great. So... Goblin Electromancer. Going to cast Discovery. Uh, We really want this card. Charter Course. Can discard a Beacon Bolt? Okay. Um, then discard Chemistry's Insight to Radical Idea? Would have preferred an opt to some of the stuff we had going on there, but that's fine. Alright, opponent, what are you going to block? There? Okay, that's what I thought. And now, like, what does the opponent do? What do they do from here? <laughs> like, I don't know, play a Doom Whisperer? It'll just die to Beacon Bolt. Uh, we sack our Electromancer here? Nah, Electromancer's really good. So now, hmm, I wanted to play another Crackling Drake, but I think I'm just going to reanimate our Phoenixes so we can attack for eight. Uh, don't think we want that. We should actually have done this first anyway, in case we find a Phoenix. Doesn't really matter that much. Oh man, sick. Then we get to flashback a Radical Idea. Jumpstart a Radical Idea, pitching a Phoenix. Combat. And the opponent's dead! <laughs> they thought erasured us. Admittedly, I think they took the wrong card. Then they played a Disinformation Campaign, played a Bolas, and, like, they curved out with interactive cards, and we smashed them. They had nothing for what we were doing. So, yeah. Uh, same deal as before. We are going to bring in unbeatable is it cards. What's this at 57? Okay. I think I'll actually bring in disdainful strokes this time. Uh, instead of negate. Counters very similar set of stuff, but also, this also counters bolas. And do we want lava coils? It's not as important to kill Bolas as the Drake, because Bolas won't kill us that quickly. This puts us at 60. I'll leave it here. We can reassess later. Like, I don't know, if they are playing Doom Whisperers, we might cut Lava Coil just for more negates and radical ideas or something like that. We don't have great answers to Doom Whisperers, so maybe I'm actually going to make that hedge. I'm going to regret this if the opponent is playing Blood Operative, but in case they are playing... I think it's more likely, based on what we saw, that they are playing Whisperer, in which case we would rather have a Beacon Bolt since it can kill the Whisperer. And is great. Mana that works, cantrips, including a way to pitch this Arclight Phoenix. If opponent does not have blood operatives, which, I don't know, just they, that would be a lot of threats if they're playing Bolas in their deck, so I don't think that they are. Discovery, sure. 
if they've been a blood operative here, they did not. Uh, that would be our clue, but let's go ahead and just do this. We are a little flooded. We are even more flooded. Oh boy. All right, let us hope that the opponent doesn't have blood operative. This is more beatable, but also makes me regret bidding this uh, coil. Oh dear. Holy crap, we are in a lot of trouble. I don't even think I can bend the Phoenix anymore. We just need to start hard casting these. We have flooded out horrifically. This is why people play this card. Uh, it is really good when your opponent boards out all their removal. And we didn't even board it all out. We just trimmed on it. We might have to bring shocks back in, which feels pretty bad. But Oh, okay. Yep, sure. It's not even a little scary. Yeah, that can easily kill Bolas. I think we're actually just going to play Phoenix and attempt to block, which is pretty bad, but I think that's what we've got. Okay, they have the Contempt. Opponent running out of cards, but they've got, uh, they're going to go up to two of our cards in Exile, which is a lot of resources to work with. Hopefully we find a removal spell for Thief, and then we can just kill this, Beacon Bolt this, and be fine. That is not the case. I am going to go ahead and Beacon Bolt Bolas. We just really need to get him off the table. We're dying too fast. Uh... One thing about magic is usually when you start flooding out, you then stop flooding because your deck doesn't have that many lands left in it. That is apparently not the case here. Opponent is very far ahead. I think what we'll probably do is rather than... Oh wow, they cast Ardniv Mizzet? Yep, that's game. Okay. Thief of Sanity. Good card. Good card. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going to bring shocks back in because they're just they're too bad against everything else. But we will go up to the full four lava coils. I'm actually just going to cut disdainful strokes. We don't care about our opponent's big cards. We can fight through a bow loss. We just need to not lose to a thief of sanity and we need to be able to do our own thing. All right. I like how this looks. We have a fair number of cards that answer the Thief, but we do need to draw at least one of them. Uh, this hand is too bad. We don't have a blue source. If these were two islands instead, this hand would be incredible, but... Eh, I mean, it's fine. That's what we want. Kinda. It'll help us grind. And like, it's just one less look towards an answer to a potential thief. I think that's fine. Alright, Discovery. Show us the goods. Ugh. Yeah, let's just get rid of these. We'll find a fourth land some other way. Alright. Can pitch that to a radical idea eventually. Thought Erasure? Sure, our hand is very resilient against that. One of the reasons why this deck is very good. Like, what What do they take here? A Chemister's Insight? That's not very good. Discovery, I think, was the right choice, but that's not very good either. Really want to find a removal spell here. Perfect! Um, There's nothing we need to play... In our main phase. I guess we should have Radical Idea'd first in case we found our one Is It Guildgate. Or if we found like a Steam Vents or something. This is fine though. Of 
We're a little light on cards, but we're about to really start getting things going. Alright, let's draw a card. What do we got? Mountain, sure. Um, While they're tapped low, I'm just going to go ahead and slam this Phoenix. Okay, sure. All right, we are insulated against Bolas or potential Thief of Sanity. We'll just go ahead and pass the turn here. Opponent's land entering tapped is quite bad for them because it meant they couldn't use like a four mana card draw spell or even like this. Go ahead and draw first. Okay, we'll go ahead and pitch an island to Bolas. We drew one of our very good cards, so that's awesome. Let's see. Yeah, we didn't have another Phoenix or anything like that. Land for turn. Lava Coil Bolas. Probably just going to do nothing this next turn. Sure. Thief of Sanity resolves. Let's go ahead, attempt to kill this now. Okay, if they were able to stop it, I don't think I would have attacked. I would have attempted to block. Hmm. So we need six lands anyway for Niv-Mizzet, so I'm going to play the land, and I will, uh, on their end step, I will Chemister's Insight pitching Charter Course. A little bit of a spew. We don't really want to pitch a card like this, but I want to go ahead and use my mana efficiently. Yeah, man, that's fine. <laughs> you can use that on my Phoenix instead of my Niv. But yeah, I want to use my mana efficiently and go ahead and go up on cards. Uh, and like I said, we needed the sixth land anyway. Okay, well, our draws were very bad. Very, very bad and punished us for our decision. So, what do we do here? Can we just wait a million turns until we can, like, play this and immediately play a Radical Idea? Maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead and wait a bit. Opponent doesn't have any pressure, they don't really have anything going on. If we get Thought Erasured, we're gonna feel very stupid, but... Okay. So, go ahead and play our land, niv miss it. Then we can just pass the turn. All right, opponent, answers are bust. Another Chupacabra or a uh, Eldest Reborn would be bad for us here. This, however, is acceptable. Just going ahead and doing this so we know what to... We have as much information as possible to know what to pitch to Bolas. Bolas is fine. I will pitch this Goblin Electromancer. Draw a card. Shoot you for one. Ral, is it Viceroy? Oh boy, like I said before, that is very loud. All right, and opponent packs it in. They did not have the tools to deal with that. Man, this deck is so good. I heartily recommend anyone at home. A lot of the decks I play on here for fun, but this one is fantastic. And if you want to play a good deck, you should definitely try this. So if you enjoyed this video and in the future you want to see a mix of fun and ridiculously good decks in standard, I would love it if you could subscribe. Helps you make helps make sure that you see all of our content as well as helps other people to find the channel and see the stuff. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.